Hi everyone, how are you all? Welcome back to another episode of Journey to Wellness and Beyond. So in the last episode, we discussed about uh, the, the most common causes of headache. And so in this episode, as the title suggests, we'll be speaking about uh, some of the things, some solutions that you can do in order to get more comfort, some relief. Um, while these things do help, more or less also in the short term and in the long term, you also you have to understand that uh, issue, addressing the underlying issues is very important. Yeah, I mean, that's the key. Uh, and this is uh, what we are giving you all is rapid relief, which can help you in the moment, but then definitely you need to dig in deeper. Exactly. And so by no means is this again a comprehensive list. There's a, a lot more that can be added to this. And but I think we have lots to cover because especially in Jui has a lot <laughs> that she's going to add. Uh, she's going to talk about today. So how about I get started first? Yeah, why not, please? Okay. So the very first thing when it comes to headache, and the very basic thing is um, dehydration. Yeah. A lot of times it can be as simple as that. So you really starting with hydration. You really need to look into your hydration levels. And also, since uh, many of us also filter our water, and many of uh, and many a times it's reverse osmosis, we have to understand that a lot of minerals are stripped from the water, the natural minerals. So if you if you are filtering your water with an RO filter and there is no mechanism to add back the minerals, you have to look into that. Because uh, as I'm about to tell you, a second point, which is a magnesium deficiency, plays a big role in uh, headaches as well and uh, that's one of the essential minerals apart from um, the ones we'll be talking about later so magnesium deficiency is is highly common even as we know because of soft, uh, toxic erosion and also because of the water but uh, it's not really necessary that you have to opt for a magnesium supplement i would always suggest to focus more on foods uh, supplements should only be targeted and uh, only for the short term so um, the best, my favorite, my favorite food would be a dark chocolate, of course. You know, if so, so if you have no problem with chocolate, because at, at times, as we discussed earlier, chocolate can also give you a headache to some people because of the histamine. Um, so any which ways, if you don't have a problem with chocolate, you can always have like a a three point a three point five ounce bar which is around 176 mg. You don't have to have the whole bar, just have two, three chocolates and focus on other foods which are rich in magnesium, like uh, dried seaweeds, dark leafy greens, like uh, collard, spinach, Swiss chard, broccoli, beans, whole grains like millet, brown rice, quinoa, almonds, cashews, uh, seeds, sesame seeds, lentils, there's avocados, wheatgrass, perlina, chlorella, and there's so much. And it just... If you're going to go for the supplements because you're still in the phase of adjusting your, your your diet, your nutrition, you can always offer magnesium citrate if you are also facing a problem of constipation. If you don't have a problem with that, you don't want something that's laxative in nature, you can always go for glycinate. That's much more well absorbed and uh, that'll be a good idea. So apart from this, uh, however, you also have to keep in mind that uh, the, there are some individuals who might have a problem with the magnesium absorption, especially when it's in the supplement form taken orally because of either a very high fiber diet, which is generally not the case. Yeah. But uh, for people who are using diuretics, antibiotics uh, or proton pump inhibitors, which is used for acid reflux prescribed for. So in that case, uh, magnesium absorption, even even by our supplements is going to be a, a problem. Then uh, a few things, because she has so much to cover. Then I said, okay, mm -hmm. I'll just talk a little. Uh, ginger is uh, very well known in the tr traditional Chinese herbal uh, medicine for uh, headaches. And just having a small piece of ginger, a fresh ginger can really uh, give you some uh, relief. Of course. I mean, uh, it's uh, obviously also... Um helping with peristalsis. Exactly. If someone has constipation and then that's translating into a headache. Exactly. So ginger tea is amazing for that. Ginger tea in the tea form as well. Yeah. And then coriander seeds. So th this is more of an Ayurvedic treatment for sinus related headaches. 
where you can uh, steam inhalation of uh, core uh, coriander seeds wherein you put the coriander seeds in a small ball uh, in a bowl and pour boiling water and then drape it with a towel uh, over your head and just inhale the steam then we have celery celery juice it's really amazing it really uh, helps to relax and uh, even for people who are very anxious it, it does help with anxiety as well and with pain and it's also rich in potassium and it's also actually used for people who have stomach ulcers that's it's that is amazing fair. for that so by food is medicine that's true and 100% along the all along the way we have had medicine right with us that's our our food we it's it's not just just to fill up your stomach or just for nutrients blah 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 micronutrients macronutrients there's so much more to food right so talking about celery um so again celery seeds can also be used in your juices and soups and smoothies and around 2 ounces of celery juice um you can have around 2 ounces of celery juice and just calm down relax lie lie down just stop doing what you're doing give time to your body to yourself and just let the uh, let the relief come in and of course uh, she'll be talking about a lot of herbal teas but like i said relaxation relaxation is a must when you're having headache it's not like you're having a headache you want to pop in and then said you want to go and do your stuff you know all your work and especially nowadays that we are so uh, screen addicted screen glued yeah and after a headache you can't take that it's a lot of strain on the eyes and it also depends upon the kind of headache you are facing but um, in any occasion i wouldn't be sitting in front of a screen uh for whatever time it takes to get myself relieved of this pain first of all so in fact the best thing to do would be to look into nature look at the greenery that's that's by the nature not green walls um that itself helps a lot it releases certain hormones in the body and uh, it shifts the biochemistry just also, by looking at nature but not through a window the sky also looking at looking the sky, at the sky. Right? because the blue color even that's very calming unless you are not having a problem with the light yeah uh so yeah any which ways uh, then we come you know with relaxation breathing is really important and what happens is many a times when we are stressed out our breathing is short and hurried so we need to slow down right so what you can do is slowly count to 5 as you inhale and then count slowly to 5 as you exhale and pay attention to how your body starts shifting into a more relaxed state and visualize relaxation find a comfortable quiet place where you can close your eyes and combine slow breathing with your imagination where you're picturing relaxation entering your body and tension leaving your body with every breath you take and with every deep breath that you're taking you're visualizing this golden light coming inside and doing its magic and as you exhale out imagine that gray the the gray uh, the the gray air or all the pain being relieved and leaving your body a gray mist leaving your body that cream mist which represents all what your body does not need so yeah there are many ways to visualize it this is just an example i i almost like got into my own meditation right now <laughs> because yeah. your voice is so soothing oh thanks a lot of course i'm studying uh, hypnosis i really love it or you can say uh, meditation or, or guided meditation what do you want to call it just is just a shifting of the brain waves right yeah any which ways um then we come to emf electromagnetic fields and emf in itself they, they are not bad it's just uh, it's it's a frequency right it's a, and there is native and not non native as we have discussed in previous episodes so here what we are talking about is non native uh low frequency electromagnetic fields or in short electromagnetic field radiation emf radiation so uh when you want to really deal with uh, with emf uh, radiation make sure that you have uh, that you have a, a sanctuary wherein there are less electronics 
And even if let's say there is there is a no, even you have a phone with you, try just switch off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth if you don't need it. You have uh, especially since it's your workplace and everyone has a computer or laptop. If possible, uh, plug it into a LAN rather than using a wireless uh, router. So and, and of course having these small indoor plants and cactuses they really absorb EMF. So, so small things that go a long distance. Also, hydration again is really important even when it comes to uh, EMF because uh, it helps the cells to deal with the stressor because uh, EMF radiation is a stressor to the body. And um, grounding. So basically standing or walking barefoot on the earth, not on the streets, <laughs> on, on mud, on sand. It fills your body with negative ions, which is more like uh, the energetic antioxidants that comes from the Earth's low magnetic field, which is a good thing. Not all EMF is bad. These ions have a positive effect on your cells. Then, of course, uh, if, if you have a habit of talking a lot over the phone, so make sure that you are uh, using either you're talking on loudspeaker or video or just use these uh, Tube headsets, uh, they are like hollow. Uh, the wire is a bit hollow towards the end. They are like tube headsets that you could use uh, if, if you are talking, if you really need to talk on the phone, you can use those. Um, and apart from that, I think the, the last point I'd like to touch, into, or touch on is sound vibrational healing. So at the level of the cell, information is exchanged through electromagnetic signals, apart from biochemical signals that we talk about hormones and stuff, and also sonic frequencies. And at the atomic level, biological complexities and uh, energy information flow can be, can be viewed in terms of vibrations. And even when we talk about sound and music, it's vibrations, yeah. right? So for music for my, migrations, I can say, there are various styles of music, um, and there were there were a lot of studies done on this. But by the way, why on earth does anyone need studies to listen to music, anyways? So various styles of music, like classical music, jazz, world music, it really helps relax the brain, relax and and get you get you in a relaxed state, and it does help. Those frequencies do help in headaches. And uh, apart from this. Um, and yeah, when it comes to these instrumental musics, uh, which is optimal for relaxation, you can consider pieces with slower tempos between 40 to 80 beats a minute and fewer instrumental voices. And then there's also binaural beats, which is very popular, but very few people know about it. So it's actually when there are two diff there are two tones used with different frequencies in each year. So like in one year, there's another frequency and the other year, there's a different frequency and tone. And then the brain identifies the beat and creates an additional tone. And this third tone is called a binaural beat. And in the long term, when it's not just like you just listen to it when you have a headache, just make it to a habit to mm -hmm. devote some time to it. And I would highly recommend uh, uh, the Hemi Singh tapes by Robert Monroe's Institute, they are excellent. So if you just get into the habit of listening to these beats, um, this guided meditation on a daily basis, just for half an hour, it's a 40, half an hour, 40 minute med meditation, but worth it. It's going to really help you in the long term. And there are so many other things that we can get into. Uh, there, there are a lot of new things that or actually ancient things that we are rediscovering. Things like sonopuncture, acupressure also helps and there's a lot more lot more there's tapping there is so much more yeah. but i i should now i think i've taken enough time it's it's i think you should take over now yeah i mean i love all the all the tips you've given because i think at the end of the day what's really tangible and usable we can uh, easily do it yeah and what's available to us uh, on the spot because you never know when a headache would occur it would just come without notice exactly so uh, let's get on to the first one which is cluster headaches and these can be uh, as i uh, did discuss this in the previous uh, episode with melatonin deficiency so we do need herbs which are nervine and high in melatonin and uh, they can be of course uh, you can take these two 
actually regulate the circadian rhythm. But before that, I would want to, again, like how Arjun just mentioned a few points, I just want to reiterate them. Um, things like, you know, getting a good quality sleep in a dark room. That really helps to have that vital amount of melatonin. Then also avoiding blue light uh, a couple of hours before bed. Um, stop seeing your TV. You know, get away from your computer screens. Sleep in a dark room. Create a bedtime ritual. And don't do any heavy burden stress, stress-inducing work before um, you go to sleep. Because then again, you would be uh, having those looping uh, thoughts again and again and then you can't stop and then the next day I think you're going to have that headache because of uh, sleep deficiency yeah. so that's one the other one is another tip is uh, to uh, regulate your circadian rhythm you should actually when you get up you should go outside and look outside of the window at the sky not directly into the sun but definitely at the sky where you know your pineal gland it gets uh, more regulated more in rhythm, uh, your body gets into that rhythm and uh, a routine builds up that way. And then there is a proper melatonin secretion by the end of the day. And also stop exercising late in the evening because that can also impact your circadian rhythm a lot. So now let's also move on into some um, herbs like uh, skull cap. Uh, this is an amazing nervine because of its uh, anti-anxiety and um, it, it for mental exhaustion. So I really feel that this is an amazing herb to use for cluster headaches as well as if you're having uh, dull headaches. Even in that case, it really it's very helpful to quiet the mind. The other one also being blue vervain, uh, you can also use that. Uh, because it really helps to address the tension, the weakness from constrained chi. Your chi is your vital energy. So very often that uh, when that becomes chronic, it, typ it typically arises from the metabolic activity or toxicity and a weak nervous system, which actually comes from hepatic and renal issues. So you've got to pay attention of uh, detoxing the liver and also maintaining your kidney health in terms of your stress. The next one is, um, I think I did speak about viral headaches. So it could be because of mycoplasma or mononucleosis or some kind of virus that's in your liver. So liver congestion. So herbs like one herb, which I would specifically talk about is kudzu root, also known as a Japanese arrow root. And um, it's a staple in uh, traditional Chinese medicine. And the kudzu root, the extract of that root, is really rich in isoflavonoids, and which appears to actually protect the cells from um, from the damage, oxidative damage, and as well as uh, early cell death. So, relying on kudzu extract routinely helps in neuro uh, degenerative cases, but also headaches and bone loss. In fact, the studies or the research has also been done that it's able to cure an alcoholic uh, hangover. So I would really um, suggest someone to use kudzu root if they have some cluster headaches as well, apart from the viral one. The next we come to is hypertension headaches. Here, I would like to employ herbs like linden flower um, because according to uh, another herbalist, David Hoffman, Linden is specifically indicated for hypertension with arteriosclerosis or migraine headaches, where um, even anxiety is a part of the whole picture. I think this is one of the amazing herbs for um, where you want that hypotensive, um, relaxing quality by reducing the peripheral vascular resistance as well as the perception of stress thus taking the edge off. The next one being uh, motherwort. I think motherwort as a herb is really powerful to um, make your heart more joyful and happy. It's the motherwort 
it's rightly said it's like a mother to nurture you against all the stress the anxiety resentment frustration whatever negative thinking you are feeling and having so it's an amazing herb for it's an amazing nervine actually for all the frazzled overwhelmed st stress that we uh, try to induce on ourselves and um, the next one is hibiscus um, you can have like three cups of hibiscus tea even because of its uh, ri it's rich in anthocyanins so it really helps to reduce the hypertension or any other cardiovascular problems that a person would be facing that's really great there and it's so easy and it's so easily available to use then the next one is post concussion uh, headaches in this one my suggestion would be if you can just rest the brain your brain your eyes the nervous system that's really helpful in relieving this type of headache and herbs that can be used in such uh, cases would be um, which are lymphatic meaning they work on uh, the lymph vessels and help them circulate to reduce the toxicity and uh, blood movers or uh, herbs that help to move the circulation throughout the body so in that category i would always and forever uh, call upon yarrow as my favorite herb because it's the master of blood helping with congealed blood thus moving the blood to uh, to and from the surface and it helps with dilation of peripheral vessels but also it acts as an astringent to tone the blood vessels so it's sort of like normalizing between the two extreme ends of the spectrum and it's used fantastically for old and new bruises therefore it's used in concussions another one is cleavers now uh, cleavers is also a lymphatic decongestion and according to pliny the herbalist he also considered it excellent for headaches and earaches which uh, even matthew would would uh, confirm still same the next one being uh, sinus headaches now any circumstance in which uh, sinuses cannot drain or uh, itself like properly so it can result in an infection and too much mucus or not enough drainage gives the bacteria uh, an opportunity to grow so it's really important to keep the sinuses open and draining especially if you're having a cold or flu or some allergy it often happens uh, that a day or two after the copious mucus production the flow lessens and congestion starts building up so here we have to use herbs that are uh, thinning the mucus and relieving and relieving that that flow you know getting the drainage uh, properly out so uh, herbs like mullein can be really helpful over here which are rich in uh, they are they are uh, mucilaginous and they are also rich in saponins so it's really helpful for the respiratory system and it's an expectorant and an anti-inflammatory herb you can also make a steam of um, onions um, you can chop some onions and put it in a bowl uh, and pour some really boiling water and just you know close your eyes and put a towel over your head and just inhale like the, the steam exactly it's coriander the same, seeds right the coriander the seeds, seeds yeah. yeah the same technique yeah or, or you can also use grapefruit uh, seed extract which also helps in reducing the inflammation and thinning the mucus uh the next one is hormonal headaches now because of estrogen dominance um hormonal headaches can be a part of the picture um things like donkai donkwai which is angelica sinensis um this one is also traditionally used to build the blood after loss due to monthly menstruation and to ease the pain the pain and the pelvic congestion which is often associated with the menses so that is something that you can use uh, when you're having your migraines before or after your periods or during as well even another one uh, similar to that would be black cohosh um black cohosh is used specifically when there is dull aching cold kind of pain possibly with some depression so, uh, like the doom and gloom type 
So despite, I would say, the popularity of black cohosh as an herb to support the avouterine uh, system, its early traditional uses to ease rheumatism, arthritis, headaches, and neurological pain should not be ignored. So this is, I think, amazing to use during your uh, menstrual uh, irregularities or your menstrual headaches. Uh, if it's kind of like a dull headache and it's related to your menses. So, yeah. The next one is also you can uh, employ along with all these things, you can obviously always have like essential fatty acids like evening primrose oil, borage oil, because even they can help balance hormones and reduce the incidence of migraines. And the next category is uh, migraine headaches. And this one we did talk about, it could be because of a lot of food sensitivities that a person faces. Yeah. Um, so in that case, some people can also find relief, as Arjun also mentioned previously, um, with acupuncture. So, um, and this can be self-administered acupuncture, wherein you press on the LI4 point, which is a space between the base of the left thumb and the pointed finger. So that can also give you immense help. Or uh, we can also use herbs like butterbur and fever few, as uh, they are really commonly used for migraines because they are potent analgesics. And they seem to work the best for pain relief as soon as the pain starts. Or you can do always a cold compression uh, on the forehead, which is again soothing. Um, and also, I would say really focus on your digestive health because many a times the migraine headaches, as I just discussed, they could be food related. So bitters such as uh, gentian, blessed thistle or uh, Oregon grape, dandelion root can actually help to secrete the digestive juices and also the bile so that all that gunk and all the, all the offending foods are going through the system and they're getting out. Another one, I would say it's a bit different. Uh, they are homeopathic herbs. So they are used in very uh, specific situations. For example, Brionia. Uh, historically, it's been used for pain, which begins after overexertion, overuse, or injury. It's the, it's the pain that comes on during the day. So maybe like when you're exercising or maybe you hurt yourself, um, or if you have like a concussion or something, maybe Brionia, you can try it that time. And another one would be uh, Calcarea Foss. These kinds of headache happen to mostly school age children or a lot of uh, mental exertion or if there is like change in weather or even if there's some kind of stiffness or pain at the nape of your neck. So I think uh, Calcarea Foss is great for that. Yeah. And I think with that, we'll have to now conclude because it's time. We are almost running out of time. <laughs> yeah. And I think we spoke a lot about these herbs and uh, homeopathics and a lot of uh, other remedies that people can uh, very easily employ in their day-to-day -day life and at least get that relief, if not getting to the root cause. And yeah, while you're getting at the root cause, what I would suggest is have patience even when you're doing all of this you have to understand that these are not pharmaceutical drugs that they'll give you instant relief at times they can you never know and also to believe in one very important thing is trusting in your own natural ability your body's own capacity to heal itself to repair itself to do what it's best for you trust in your body that it can do it whatever we said do it with a belief that is going to work because if you if you're just doing it half-heartedly, you know, intention is really important and it's everything. So with that, uh, we hope you have found this useful and you have a lot of uh, solutions now at hand and you can make a list. And also there are some things you really need to do on a regular basis. I could have also created more, but, uh, yeah, but just to keep everything uh, short and brief, this was enough and it could just be overwhelming for someone. Yeah. So anyways, uh, have an amazing weekend 
and we'll be seeing you next week until then take care be healthy be happy bye, bye. see you <laughs>